today we are going to learn about the rotor. Rotor is the most important element in the rotor spinning and we are going to learn about the construction part of the rotor is geometry and the way it is driven. These are the aspects we are going to learn today. So, the rotor the main functions are to act as a twister. The second point is to receive the fibers from the opening roller and deposit them in its groove. So, it is acting as a collecting device and to act as a suction pump. Now, this is only in the case of self suction rotor, otherwise it is not does not act as a pump. So, it is a twisting device we can say in the rotor spinning machine, its job is to receive the separated fibers which are coming from the opening roller side and then depositing them in the groove of the rotor in the form of layers after layers and is trying to consolidate also the assembled fibers. These are the functions. Now, what are the requirements in the rotor? One is that it should be light weight. It should be capable to run at a very high speed. Usually, most of the rotors in today's machine operate at a very, very high speed. It could be 80,000, 90,000, or 1 lakh, or 1 lakh 10,000 rpm. So, the rotor will be subjected to very, very high forces when it runs and the it should be capable to run at that high speed and to reduce the power consumption we have to make the rotor light. It should consume minimum energy that is another aspect and it should be amenable to cleaning easily. We will see that when the fibers are flowing into the rotor especially the, the cotton fibers lot of dust particles will also flow and they will go into the rotor and where they will go then they will go and accumulate in the groove itself. Even though we try to clean the fibers in the blow room we also clean them on carding machines and even then lot of dust particles are still left in the card sliver and we further clean them by the opening roller assembly. There also we try to remove some of the very dust particle and some trash particles which are still left in the sliver, but even then some particles or very very minute trashes are still left and these are the fiber, these are the Know, trash particles and dust particles which will finally land into the rotor and they will accumulate within the rotor. And if they keep on accumulating they ultimately lead to breakage to the yarn, twisting process get disturbed. And when it happens we have to stop the machine, stop that particular rotor not the entire machine and then clean it we have to remove the accumulated dust. Therefore, the, the design aspect of the rotor housing should be such that we should be able to remove, we should be able to we stop the particular unit, we should be able to remove the lead quickly and then clean, make the rotor open and clean it either manually or by some other automatic means. So, it should be amenable to cleaning repeatedly 
depending upon the level of dust which is still left in the, in the saliva. So, these are the important requirements lightweight, capable to run at high speed, it has something to do with the drive aspect and the bearing part, it should consume minimum energy because the more the speed we want to attain more power is required. So, and the power requirement goes very high then the cost of the manufacturing will go high. So, therefore, minimum energy requirement is also very important here. Now, rotor construction if we see in this diagram we are showing a typical simple sketch of the rotor. There is a base, there is a bearing shaft, then there is a fiber entry tube and there is another tube perpendicularly placed with respect to the rotor and through this the yarn is going to exit and here is the groove part. So, construction wise it is quite simple rotor consists of two frustro conical units joined together at their bases. The upper cone receives fibers for deposition. So, you see the fibers shown here by the blue lines. So, fiber entry point and they pass through the tube and they arrive in the rotor. Bottom cone has a bearing shaft as shown it here. This is the bottom cone and there is a fixed shaft. The material which is used is usually if you say plastic it is lightweight, but it can generate electrostatic charges. So, therefore, plastic rotors are not made. Aluminum strength weight ratio is very good, but frictional properties against the fiber not good even when polished. We all know that aluminum is very light material amongst the metals, but the problem is that when the fibers are going to land on the inner wall of the rotor, then the fiber has to slide down, we will see that. So, while it is sliding down towards the groove, the friction between the fiber and the rotor wall becomes important. A smooth sliding is something which is necessary in order to ensure that the deposited fibers are not or do not get crumbled. So, therefore, the rotors are today made from two materials the body is steel and the inner surface is coated with nickel, various oxide films, brass, chromium, boronized, nickel diamond. These are, these are basically needed to impart the right frictional properties and the other thing which is important is that the, the fibers are very, very abrasive. So, the inner wall, the frictional cross of the inner wall will get changed with time, because continuous abrasion between the fibers and the inner wall which is happening and hence we have to protect the rotor also. So, that has to be a kind of finish which not only give us the right frictional properties, but at the same time it will ensure that the wall do not get damaged quickly. everybody expects that it should have a certain life. So, depending upon the you know the, the cost of a rotor, there is a certain expectation about the life of the rotor also. And when you discuss about the life, the frictional property changes of the inner wall is become also become very important. So, you have to ensure that the frictional properties remain what is required and what is required is a smooth sliding action of the fibers when they are going towards the groove 
they are land on the inner wall which is inclined and they are gradually they will be sliding down towards the groove. So, while in this process this would not get crumbled. Now, type of rotors basically there are two types self suction and external suction these are the two types of rotors which have been developed. Now, in the self suction type there are two varieties holes present in the collecting group you can see in this rotor we are showing you the holes here. or holes present near the rotor base could be two types. Here we see the holes are placed near the rotor base here not in the groove. These are known as self suction rotor that is the rotor itself will act as a suction pump and we do not need any external suction. The other one is external suction the rotor has no holes but the rotor chamber is connected to an external suction unit. So, that we suck air through the rotor. Why do you need to suck air through the rotor? Because we need to transport fibers from the opening roller surface to the rotor and how they will be transported it is through the medium of moving air which is transporting the fiber. So, you have to generate an air current through the feed tube and to generate air current we have to suck air. So, we are sucking air through the rotor and there is the escape route also has to be there. and this there has to be air entry there have to air escape route both and the entire thing is connected to the so rotor housing in a way is connected to a external suction pump which is drawing air and this suction pump through ducts are connected to all the rotors of the machine. And it is this fluid flow or the air flow through the rotor is also very very important because if the turbulence gets created within the rotor the fibers which are getting deposited there will be disfigured or you can say they will be crumbled too much they will be entangled they will get caught by the you know, by the yarn which you are forming. So, all sort of disturbance will be created and they basically in a way the yarn quality will suffer and that could be frequent end breakages. So, the right velocity of the air and the nature of air which is there within the rotor in terms of the movement of the air within the rotor they are all very very important to ensure that the rotor spinning machine works very very no, very very smoothly and with it without creating much problem. The external suction unit what we have as it is written here is used to draw air through the spinning chamber suction rate is independent of the rotor speed that is the great advantage. See in the in these two cases the suction rate would depends upon the speed when the speed is higher suction rate is higher when the speed is low suction rate also falls down. So, but in case of independent suction unit it is this problem will not be there. Negative air pressure of 60 to 100 millibar is what is produced that is what of no negative pressure we require within the rotor chamber that will then cause the air to suck to get sucked from the atmosphere or from the environment.
Now, self suction type of rotor, if we look at it, the air enters and then these are through the hole itself, the air will escape. Disadvantage in the case of hole in the collecting group, if I place the hole, here the holes are placed on the base, but if the holes are there, suppose they are here in the group, this is group, this here is group, here these are the groups, then what are the problems? Suction pressure depends on the rotor speed, that will be true irrespective of wire hole these placed. Now, the stress developed at the point of twisting is too high to cause and breaks. If the holes are there in the groove itself, because groove is the place where the fibers are deposited. So, at that place, if the air is also trying to push the fibers and trying to escape through the holes, then lot of stress will develop on the fibers, because the air is passing through the fibers at the twisting points. The twisting point is moving along the periphery of the of the rotor or along the periphery of the groove, where the groove is. So, the, when the point moves or the point is close to a hole or aperture, lot of stress will develop, additional stress will develop, which may cause end breakage. And owing to the alternation of solid surface and hole, pulsating tension develops at the point of end formation, causing irregular spinning tension, thereby leading to breakage. Because the, the periphery is, let us say, this is the periphery of the rotor or the groove. Now, I, I have holes like this here another here, another here, another here, like that, we have holes at regular interval. So, you have a solid surface, then there is a hole, then another solid surface, then there is a hole and this will create a pulsating tension. Tension peaks will be created repeatedly, which can cause irregular spinning. The other problem is short fibers get trapped lengthways between the holes, short fibers, because the holes are quite close to each other in comparison to the length. Even the short fibers can get between the holes and they can also get accumulated in the hole, can choke the holes, the dust will go and you know, settle there. So, having holes, whether on the base or in the group, we will have lot of implications. And therefore, today you will not find a rotor where the holes are there inside. So, we self suction rotor therefore, could not succeed. We all have external suction rotors. A rotor drive, if we see, drive could be two types direct drive or indirect drive. In the case of direct drive, rotor shaft is mounted in ball bearing, turning at the same speed as the rot rotor itself. They will run at the same speed as the motor, because the rotor shaft is connected to the motor directly. and these cannot operate beyond a 90,000 rpm. So, this kind of drive is there, but the limitation is we cannot go beyond the 90,000 rpm. There are mechanical no, difficulties in running the rotor beyond the speed of 90,000 with direct drive. That means, and second thing, for each and every rotor, we should have a motor. So, there are individual motor drive, where if we have 120 rotors in a machine, we need 120 motors.
the other one is indirect drive as it is shown here a pair of twin discs support the rotor stem driven by a tangential belt. So, he, so these two are the twin disc and here is the rotor and this is the rotor shaft. This is the rotor shaft. So, the rotor shaft is placed in between in the nip of the twin disc bearing and then the twin discs, disc 1 and disc 2, this is disc 1, this is disc 2. These two discs are actually in contact with a tangential belt and the belt is driven by a motor. So, the belt is tangentially placed on the disc, it is in contact with the disc. As the belt runs, this will rotate, the disc will rotate and the disc rotates the shaft, rotor shaft will also rotate and thereby rotor rotates. The speed ratio between the rotor to the twin disc is 10 is to 1. That is how the diameters are chosen, the diameter of the disc and the diameter of the rotor shaft are chosen in such a way that one rotation of the disc will give you 10 rotation of the rotor shaft. So, the ratio is 10 is to 1. So, for 1,20,000 rotor speed, twin disc bearing runs at 12,000 rpm, it will run at 12,000 rpm. So, the speed of the disc is much less in comparison to the speed of the rotor, 10 times less. The rotor has an additional thrust bearing to guarantee a fixed lateral position. The tip of the rotor stem rotate against an oil coated steel ball. So, there is a oil coated steel ball which is placed over here. Because it the at the high speed the shaft can generate thrust. the steep of the rotor stem rotates against the oil coated, this is just to absorb the shocks. So, oil coated steel ball is placed over here and when it gets thrust it is going to absorb the thrust. So, that our aim is to ensure that the rotor rotates uniformly at a high speed without much of a vibration because vibration will lead to tension peaks in the yarn that will cause yarn breakage. So, we have to avoid that and that is how the entire rotor drive system has been designed and which is followed by the reported machine manufacturers. Advantages of indirect drive one is the bearing lasts longer, smooth rotor acceleration as a result of slippage between the rotor stem and the tangential belt. So, rotor acceleration is smooth, so some slippage is actually good. The rotor can be easily pulled out when needed. When we want to take out the rotor for some inspection purpose, we simply pull the rotor out in these directions easily. And push it back, it settles between the disc. So, pulling out the rotor for inspection purpose, for cleaning purpose or replacement purpose is very easy and put it back also is very easy. So, these are the advantages and bearing lasts long because the bearing speed is not that much at the most 12,000 rpm because it will be always 10 times less. Whereas, in the case of direct drive, if this rotor speed is 80,000, the bearings also rotate at that speed and hence that problem exists and generally most of the drive we have twin disc bearing 
and this kind of drives are indirect drives are used. Now, rotor geometry, the rotor in a very simple term it is two cones attached at the base, but it is very important that what should be the inclination of the upper cone, what should be the inclination of the bottom cone. These are important and we are going to discuss that. The geometrical parameters are form of the rotor, diameter and group size. These three things are very, very important. First, we will discuss diameter. Rotor diameter influences yarn character. It will also influence yarn properties. It can also have implication on the level of twist that we need to make sure that the, that the spinning is going on smoothly or the spinning stability is there. We are not encountering frequent breakages. It also have effect on the rotor speed that we are going to choose and it can also have influence on the productivity. So, rotor diameter selection for a given count of yarn and type of fiber is important because there are many things which are influenced or which are affected by the rotor diameter. Technologically, large diameter rotors offers advantages. However, the restriction is due to power consumptions. Larger the diameter, more is going to be the wet when the material remains same. So, Though there are technological advantages, we will discuss why, what are the advantages. The restriction is due to power consumption. So, minimum rotor diameter has been prescribed, we say the minimum diameter of the rotor will be 1.1 to 1.2 times the staple length of the fiber. Diameter should not fall below this. And the maximum diameter is limited by the power consumptions. So, d max is the d mean plus 20. These are some empirical formula which have been suggested that there is a minimum diameter which is mostly decided by the staple length of the fiber or length of the fiber that we are going to process and there is a maximum diameter also. If we go beyond that, power consumption is going to be unnecessarily very high. The smaller the rotor, higher is the possible and optimum rotor speed. Small diameter has a advantage and lower would be the energy consumptions. Speed that can be attained will be will be higher and uh, the energy consumption can be lower because the mass is less. The weight is going to go down if we if we have an option between two diameters, the lower diameter is always beneficial. Generally we will feel that because it will have less weight and hence less uh, energy requirement will be there or the other way you can say it, if the diameter is small I can go for little higher speed and take advantage of the productivity. For a given level of twist if I can increase the speed by 10 percent let us say going from one diameter to a little smaller diameter my productivity can increase also. So, that way now it can help, but higher would be the requirement of twist if we go for small diameter rotors. So, the possible gain that we expect 
because the speed is 10 percent more. So, one can think that that will lead to 10 percent more productivity, but not necessarily because we may find that by doing so the end breaks have gone up and to compensate that then we have to go for a higher level of twist and if we do so a productivity will again go down. So, what was expected that expectation may not be fulfilled because with smaller rotor higher twist is required in the yarn in order to spin satisfactorily. And if I can go for higher if we have to go for higher twist then harder is going to be the yarn the yarn character is going to change. So, that will be a there is a negative consequence of trying to go for lower rotor diameter. And why it will be harder because of more wrapper fibers formations which are going to discuss later. There are many fibers in the rotor yarn which are actually wrapping the yarn. perpendicular to the yarn axis. Some of them will wrap and the inclination angle could be less than 90 degree, but there could be some fibers which will be wrapping the core part of the yarn at 90 degree also. And these wrapper fibers which are wrapping the yarn code at 90 degree, they will make the yarn hard these upper fibers are known as belts that will cause the rotor yarn harder. So, the diameter range practically varies between 28 to 65 mm. So, depending upon the type of fiber or blend ratio or level of dust which is there in this fiber the fineness of the fiber, the length of the fiber, whether the fiber is cotton or it is you know, polyester cotton or viscose mixed cotton or PV only. Depending upon that, the diameters are chosen and typical diameter values of the rotor lies between 28 to 65 mm. We will learn more about the rotor selection in some other uh, session. Now, we will go to the rotor groove. The groove is a very interesting area of the rotor functions are here is the place where the fibers are going to gather. The groove is shown in this diagram. So, groove is here. the fibers will flow down, the fibers will arrive here and then they will flow down, simply they will slide down and we will finally reach the groove, which is a very narrow you know, wedge shaped space within the rotor. The groove helps in compaction because of the centrifugal force that is acting on the fibers and the limited space in which we are trying to accommodate the fibers in the corner that we are creating a corner and we are placing the fibers there and then we are applying a force because which is a centrifugal force and hence the fibers are getting compacted there. And facilitation of self cleaning action that is another function of the groove. That groove the rotation of the yarn within the groove can also help in cleaning the groove. The fibers which are accumulating within the groove they are ultimately getting twisted 
and when the yarn is getting twisted, we'll see that that when the, the place where the yarn formation point is there within the groove, at that place the accumulated fibers are getting twisted. And the twisting action or rotation of the fibers within the groove will cause lot of dust particles which are settled there, those dust particles will be scraped out. So, that is another uh, purpose of the group geometry that is facilitates self cleaning. So, how much cleaning is possible which all depend upon the geometry of the group. Now, the group types are two one is narrow and the other one is wide. So, narrow means the corner is very very narrow, the dimensions are two less and wide means it is quite wide. Narrow groups capable to accommodate small group of fibers is suitable for fine count yarns. When you try to process fine, we try to produce fine count yarn. The number of fibers in the yarn cross section also will be less. So, we have to go for a very narrow group so that we can compact the fibers. If the group is wide and fibers are less in number, then compaction will be less. Suitable for small rotors running at high rotor speed. When narrow groups are they are in small rotor mostly which are running at high speed. The wide groups are capable to accommodate a large group of fibers and suitable for coarse count. So, generally narrow group means for finer count yarn and coarse group means for coarse count yarn because fiber number of fibers in the cross section is more and hence the group size has to be bigger and they are used in large rotor running at lower speed. So, one is wide group, the other one is narrow group. Now, group what is the optimum radius of the groups? If I look at the groove here as shown it here, this is the groove and these are the fibers, these are the fibers. So, optimum groove radius, so what should be the radius of this group? It has been stated to be 1.5 to 2 times the yarn radius d y by 2, where d y is the diameter of the yarn. So, groove radius would be 1.5 to 2 times the expected yarn radius and yarn radius or, or yarn diameter we can all calculate based on this simple formula which have been stated in many textbooks the diameter of the yarn is 2 into a constant yarn count in text divided by pi into 1000 into rho f, where rho f is the diameter of is the density of the fiber not diameter is the density of fiber. And k is a constant and the constant k is could be 1.2 to 1.4 and rho f is the fiber density, the unit is gram per centimeter cube. So, group radius must be greater than n radius by 1.5 to 2 times. Now, what is the influence of rotor group? the yarn characteristics that means compactness 
of the yarn where that means the diameter of the yarn. Then it affects the strength of the yarn, the hardiness of the yarn, the handle part, how soft the handle is whether it is soft or harsh or hard and it can also affect the level of twist. The second thing is deposition of dust and dirt depending upon the material used. How much dust will be settling there and how quickly they will be removed due to self cleaning action of the rotor itself will all depends upon the group geometry. Some groups which is too narrow the, the rotating you know, the yarn formation point may not be able to really reach the remote corner of the groove and will not be able to scrape out the, the deposited dust. In that case some dust will always remain inside the groove. The it depends upon the material used, rotor diameter, rotor speed and intended yarn character. What type of yarn finally you want? Character basically means whether you want a soft yarn, whether do we need a hairy yarn or we need a hard yarn. So, character of the yarn can be changed it depends upon the rotor group. Rotor group can affect therefore, rotor speed, rotor diameter selection also will depend may depend upon rotor group and the material that is used and intended yarn character. Now, groups type has been stated in the textbooks as S type, U type, G type and T type. These are the four different types of groups which are there. G groove ultimately groups are basically two types you can say narrow and wide and within that these varieties may exist depending upon the as I said type of fiber you want to process, how much dust is there. If we want to process only viscose rayon there is no dust in that, if we want to process only viscose and polyester together there is no dust in there. So, whether dust exists or not, whether trash exists or not and what is the count of yarn I am going to produce. So, there are the many different aspects that affects the group selection also. So, rotor and group they go together with this let me close thank you.